Walton is best remembered for his goal-scoring ability and behavior that was sometimes unusual. Oh, whatever the wildest thing that Randy Moss could think of doing wouldn't even make the, the book on Shaky Walton. We got upset and we, we lost, uh, I think it was a playoff game, and we were heading to the dressing room. He took a right turn through the garage and with his skates on and sparks were flying all the way to his car, jumped in his car and took off. Jumped in the car with my gloves and my skates, all my whole full uniform on, and drove out of the building downtown St. Paul, right into one of my favorite bars downtown. Went in there, double parked, went in the car, had about four or five double rum and cokes, and the people in there were just, it was packed, and they were screaming, yelling, going nuts, and signing autographs. Got in, by, downed all the drinks, went out of the building, right home, and pouted. Walton was an offensive piece of a puzzle outlined by toughness. Glenn was uh, the architect of the team, so you know there's going to be some uh, rough and tumble characters, and we had those. Three of them came from Virginia, Minnesota. The brothers Carlson, Jack, Jeff, and Steve, were discovered at a tryout camp. We did it more of a publicity stunt than anything. Let's have a big whole tryout, let everybody try out, and we'll get a lot of good publicity. We didn't expect to find any players at all. And here came these three kids with a big horn rim glasses on, and, and we looked at them and said, oh my goodness. The Carlsons wound up at the Saints Farm Club in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and became the inspiration for the hit movie Slapshot. Harry Neal was there the night they entered the stands in Utica, New York. They played the next night, Johnstown did back in Johnstown, so I had to spend 175 bucks to get him out of jail. So I phoned Sonmore and said, Glenn, I don't know whether these guys are good enough to play on our team, but I'll tell you one thing. If we bring them up, any one or all three, we want to start them at home because they're going to have people coming back to see their next tackle. So I sat between two of them in the dressing room at one time in the corner. Well, they were pulling pranks all the time. It was just, just, so just like slaps up, you know. The, this, they had everything but the toy trains. <laughs> Jack Carlson was called up first, and his physical presence became legendary. You know, you say, don't worry about fighting, nobody ever gets hurt. Well, if you fought with Carlson, you might get hurt, because he had the great big knuckles and the great big hands, and he just would pummel you. If you look at his hands, they look like a bunch of bananas. He had big hands and just a real big reach, and he could pull people in like they're on a fishing reel and then just send them back out like they're on a roller coaster. And, snapped their heads and, and he was real accurate. Carlson delivered his share of knockouts, including one to Mike Walton when the Saints played Johnstown on a promotional stop in Mankato. Shaky Walton goes in the corner with my younger brother Steve and drills him. I step in there and let Shaky have one right in, the, right in the mug. And it was like turning on a faucet. I skated as hard as I could for Jack. I was going to drop my gloves and I woke up about a half hour later, he just broke my nose from one side to the other, dropped me. I thought, my gosh, you know, this could be, a, here's a superstar player. And, and I walked up to him and I wanted to talk about it, but how do you approach him? I said, uh, gee, Shaky, do you suppose there could be any hard feelings from that? He said, God, I hope not. 